Hello there, sword fans. Today I'm gonna to do a brief video about this ax and hammer combination here. It's not my typical review because I'm not going to swing it or actually use it on anything. I've sold these. It's my last chance to provide some feedback, some visual tours, if you will, some thoughts if you were considering buying something like it. Uh, anyway, so a bit of a talky head video if you're not interested in that, it'd be a good time to tune out. I don't know the actual models. I'll, I'll put what I can find in the description down below, but as far as I know, these are windless and they're relatively cost-effective options. So I'd assume they're under 200 bucks new and uh, they're not terribly, terribly cost, you know, terribly costly. Uh, I'll, I'll find, I'll put what I can find in the description down below. And I think they are still made, though different iterations of them may be available today. These are the ones that I got. I got them secondhand as well. So all of that context in mind. On top of that, I don't study any martial systems on how to use these. So anyway, there's my typical disclaimers. Uh, I will talk about the axe first. First, I want to point out it does this which is really cool. I like the ring that it has. That's its most charming feature to me, but there are some other incidental fun bits. I've used this, I've sharpened it. It's held up reasonably well. The edge stays on it pretty well, uh, at least for an ax. And one thing that I actually really like about this particular version is that it begins to swell. So you might be able to tell by the cross section a little bit that when you get towards the shaft, it actually swells out a little bit. And a lot of times when I see these axes made, they're made out of one thin sheet and they don't have any dimension to them. And while this still may be a far cry from the historical axes, uh, it's at least got some swell, some dimension to it where others have none. So I, I do like that. I don't know what these flares are on the top and bottom of the axe. They might be used for something. Theoretically, I could kind of see this one being used to hook a sword or some such thing. I haven't found, well, I haven't tried that, and there's no langet on the face of it, so it might damage the shaft, so I'm not, I'm not going to try it. But I have found that I can get my little finger under the swell, and I could do some sort of fine fiddly bits if I, you know, scraping or chopping or, or uh, you know, so, something like that if I wanted to. Uh, in any case, I don't know what these holes and, and the like are on the axe are for. I don't know if there's a historical use for them, uh, but I digress. They are here. <laughs> Uh, the top piece right here also looks like it screws on or twists on or is nailed on. It appears to be welded, has never moved. I've smashed this into a water heater and the beak went through the water heater and nothing has loosened up. So it's worth noting that it's, it's seen some usage and hasn't diminished its condition since I've gotten it. Uh, the beak is a little bit shorter than some of the other beaks that I've tested. And this one uh, didn't bend or get screwed up. It's got scratches and stuff like that from being puncturing a water heater, but it never actually... Uh, got damaged. The others kind of bent and twisted. This one still appears relatively straight. The axe head has some sort of wedge or something I'd imagine in the top. That might be what this was for, but I, I can't tell. And then there's a pin, which you can kind of make out between these two lines on here that runs through the shaft. Now, I had thought that this was actually holding on the langets as well, but these langets are scales, for lack of a better word. They don't actually attach, uh, something that I discovered actually recently. I can get a fingernail underneath them, pry them, and I can see that they don't run under the axe head, which is what I assume they were doing uh, for a very long time. Anyway, these are just scales that are held on by these little brass screws that are on the, the scale side of things. So I imagine you could turn them into langets, you could weld it or something like that, um, but as they are right now, they're not attached and they're more ornamental. Uh, still worth noticing uh, or noting that I did bash this into things. It's been a few years, but it did cut well. It was pretty devastating. It's a little on the, the tip heavy side, but as a, a knightly weapon, I suppose that's maybe par for the course. I don't have a whole lot of experience on what these should weigh, but I would imagine you might want a little bit of mass. The axe head was always fun to use, but I actually like the, the crow's beak on here a little bit more. That was always very surprising on how deep you could bene, uh, penetrate or bury itself into targets like wood and, and the like. The shaft, not sure what it's made out of, but it held up well and it appears like a cube, but it's actually a rectangle, so I, I can index it. Um, it doesn't have an ovoid shape, which I might prefer because when I'm using a blade, I'm a little bit more particular on edge alignment, though I don't know if you have to be with, with this, uh, but it does index and it doesn't slip out of your hand. The grip, actually the shaft is one thing I can note as a distinguishing factor between this and the hammer. So talk about the shaft on the hammer. This has these brass bits on here, which if I think of somebody trying to pull it away, these little brass things do give me something to latch onto. They make the grip feel a little bit more bulbous and dumb in my hand, but if I try to twist it, I can't do that with the hammer. I can do it with the X. If I try to pull my hand away, uh, it's harder to do with the with the hammer than it is the ax. So they do have some effect on, on retention. They don't make me feel very connected to the weapon, but they, they certainly keep it in my hand stably if, if I'm worried about losing it. My fingers kind of latch onto them and it gives some, some additional purchase. 
other distinguishing bits on the hammer, it is also a little bit of a rectangle, so I can index it. And these langets actually appear to be functional. <laughs> they're welded on, and in the right light, you can kind of make out some shimmer about how they're welded. Maybe it's a different material. They seem a different material anyway than the axe head, and it's left a, a more porous structure around the head and on the surface of the langet, so for whatever that's worth. Uh, the axe head does appear to be welded together. I'm not sure about the whole construction. I haven't used this a whole lot. I bashed it into a few things, but not, not a lot. It's held together though, and it certainly has been, has been used. I probably whacked it in the same water heater, but I don't recall this having a whole lot of impact. I do see this shape a little bit more commonly. I think this is a German Warhammer. Could be mistaken. Anyway, um, it held together. I did bash it on dumb things, so it's not as though it's going to fall apart easily, but I don't know that I really tested it very effectively. Uh, and overall, it's, it's a handsome little thing, uh, and it's lighter and faster. Honestly, I feel like I can move this one around a lot easier than I could the axe. Uh, I don't know about hooking, grabbing the axe. Certainly this, this large hook area would likely be more effective for that, but uh, in terms of a more nimble percussive instrument, this, this certainly uh, feels the part. The axe, though, it has that little chimey sound, so I like it, even though the langets are pretend. So anyway, I could be saying the, the lang I think it's langets, I could be wrong. Anyway, those are, those are the two bits. I believe they're both made by Windlass. Um, I've had fun having them, but I don't do a lot of tests with axe. I don't, axes, I don't play with them very often. I don't do much with hammers and stuff either, but I have had a couple of them in my collection and I'm sorry to see these go, but they just kind of sit in the corner and don't do anything. So I'm, I'm hoping the next owner gets more happiness and joy out of them and use out of them than I have. Uh, regardless, though, they do seem like reasonably well-made things. It's kind of a disappointment that these langets don't do anything, but the X held an edge. It's got a nice swell in it. Uh, I thought those things were nice for, for budget-related items. They're not grotesquely heavy, though they might be a bit on the heavy side. This feels nimble enough, and I like that, in contrast, the, the langets are real. Uh, this does also seem to be a shape that's representative of things that I've seen in museums and collections. The proportions for windless stuff tend to, tend to be off at times, but... Um, it, it at least kind of looks the part. I'm gonna assume that it's about the same looking the part versus the actual part as their swords are. I could be off on that though. Anyway, it uh, it's a handsome piece for what that's worth. Uh, and those, those are my thoughts. I'm gonna stop here. Hopefully it's been interesting. If you have any questions, I won't have the items anymore so I can't answer them, but I will try with the photos and bits that I have, throw them in the commentary down below. Uh, incidentally, if you're interested in seeing bits of my collection in videos like this before I part ways with them, uh, is this better than nothing? Is it not? <laughs> Let me know if it's if these types of things are worth doing. Anyway, uh, that's all I got. Cheers, and thanks for watching.